Hello, good afternoon. I would like to thank the Society for the privilege of inviting me. And uh, we'll talk about tissue uh, in mitral valve repair, which is a key factor. And the first time that tissue appeared in a publication was back in uh, 86 in a paper coming from the Cleveland Clinic where they noted that there was a SAM after uh, mitral valve repair. And they said that, well, there was some redundant anterior leaflet, but the main culprit for the SAM was the ring. And so on the other side of the ocean, when Carpentier looked at the article, of course, uh, he was not very satisfied. And he asked us to find the real reasons for SAM. And a colleague, and a colleague of ours, a cardiologist, did a, Mieda did a study. And he did find that there were three factors that were um, leading to SAM. One was the small left ventricle, a narrow mitral aortic angle, and high excess of tissue. And this has started the whole thing with excess of tissue, especially in height. This led to the development of sliding plasty because high uh, tissue was bad. This sliding plasty was designed to reduce the height of the posterior leaflet and to prevent and avoid SAM. And uh, as a matter of fact, it was successful in preventing SAM. And you see that instead of having the surface of coaptation in the outflow, the surface of coaptation is in the inflow. But you note that as a consequence of the decreasing in height of the posterior leaflet, you dramatically reduce the height of the surface of coaptation, which may not be the most uh, favorable thing to do. And if you think uh, about excess of tissue, we have been focused on height, on the height, but the excess of tissue is a very complex uh, mechanism where you have mechanical stress, eventually some genetic abnormalities, which combine themselves to generate activation of interstitial cells with a lot of uh, complicated biochemical, um, biochemical uh, regulations that leads to a remodeling of the matrix, which increases the mechanical stress, and then you have a vicious circle. And then this leads to mucoid degeneration, which uh, gives leaflet expansion, excess of tissue, and eventually leads to clinical complication. So when we think excess of tissue, so this is an example uh, in an excess of tissue. In fact, you have the valve is thickened. The spongiosa is uh, filled with a unusual tissue. This is how it looks in clinic. You see that the, 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 the middle of the leaflet is really thickened. But when you think excess of tissue, there is no reason why it should be only in height. There is another factor which is extremely important, is excess of tissue in width. And uh, we know that uh, the degenerative mitral valve disease is a spectrum of disease. And you have, on one hand, valves with no excess of tissue. It's very rare. On the other hand, you have valves with uh, generalized of tissue, uh, excess of tissue. It's also very rare. And what we have most of the time is something in between with segments that are most more or less affected with excess of tissue. We'll concentrate on the posterior leaflet because it is the most frequent dysfunction and it is where most uh, of the problems are. So in the past, the gold standard has been quadrangular resection. And uh, it gave very good long-term results. But uh, it was an efficient technique, stood the test of time, results were stable, and very good functional results. But if you think, why do you resect? Because you have uh, the leaflet P1, P2, P3. P2 is the, the place of the leaflet which is the highest. Why is it the highest? It's because this is where you have the highest stress on the leaflets. 
and uh, you need a higher surface of cooptation. So is it logical to simply reject this part? And so I thought that it was not really logical. So I started to have a new approach and to respect the leaflet basically was to use Gore-Tex to cure the prolapse. Basically you have two, as you know, two situations. One when you have no excess of tissue and in this, and one when you have excess of tissue. When you have no excess of tissue, you bring with your Gore-Tex the, the free edge of the prolapse area at the same level than the free edge of the reference point. If you have some excess of tissue, you have to tie your Gore-Tex at, at a lower level because you want to avoid this and you want to avoid the SAM and you have a SAM because the distance AB plus BC is too long. And uh, to decrease the distance, you have to, 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 to shorten BC and to maintain the surface of coaptation in the inflow. So the arterial cordae, not only they do correct the prolapse, but they have another function, which is to position the posterior leaflet in the inflow. Can you use this technique in all situations? In my opinion, no. It's as stupid to respect all valves as to reject all valves. There are situations in this where the tissue, leaflet tissue, is mucoid deteriorated, is irregular, and uh, this doesn't fit with what you want, and uh, you have to do a small triangular resection to get rid of those irregularities. In a situation like this, you have excess of tissue, not only in height, but also in width. And if you are going to place the, 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 the ring, you will have some folding of the posterior leaflet and something which will not be very harmonious, and you may have the risk of having leaks between those foldings. So in a situation like this, you're obliged also to do a small triangular resection to remodel the posterior leaflet. We should have one goal is to repair, and it's, it's feasible, is to repair all prolapse of the posterior leaflet due to generative disease. And for this, you need to have a very systematic approach and to have a very clear view of what you want. And we will concentrate on the, this part of the diagram and uh, analysis by echo is key. Surgical analysis is key. Surgical, of course, the, the motion of the free edge, of course, you have to assess the uh, excess of tissue in height, but also the excess of tissue in width. And how do you do this? So you have to understand the mitral valve globally. And once you have understood the, the mitral valve, you can select and you can implant your surgical techniques. How do you do this? This is a case you have a prolapse of P2, ruptured cord, and uh, once you have made your analysis, you just place the posterior leaflet inside the left ventricle, like this. And you will see that the, valves, the valve lies very nicely on the posterior wall of the left ventricle. In this case, you have no excess of tissue in width, and so you can really very safely respect, and you should respect the tissue. On the contrary, in this case, you have uh, excess of tissue in height, but also in width. Look at the length of the, of the free edge. And if you place the posterior leaflet on the posterior wall, you see that there is an anterior bulging of the posterior leaflet. This bulging will push the surface of coaptation anteriorly, and this increases the risk of SAM. So in a case like this, you should do a small triangular resection to get rid of this excess of tissue in width. Like this. And then you'll be able to do whatever is necessary. So what you want is at the end of the operation to have a posterior leaflet which is flat, which is regular, and which lies nicely on the posterior wall of the left ventricle. So you have to use resect. 
but most of all, you have to respect the tissue, and you have to have one goal, which is to remodel the posterior leaflet and uh, be concentrated on your surface of coaptation, which is your goal. So respect rather than reject, and if you do respect, reject, you should do it with respect. <laughs> For the anterior leaflet, there are some cases, and I know that uh, Manuel Antunes, who comes, totally agree with me because he did a very nice editorial in the journal not very long time ago. For the anterior leaflet, there are cases where you also have excess of tissue. It, usually, it happens in the level of A3. And you see that the anterior leaflet is asymmetrical, is not looking nice, and you have to treat this. And you should treat this by doing a small triangular resection just to give the anterior leaflet a normal shape. And so, remodeling the anterior leaflet may also be important. So your strategy, if you don't have any tactics, it's the slowest route to victory. So you have to have a strategy because otherwise it's the noise before defeat. And what is your strategy? The strategy is simple. You should have one goal, and your goal is to remodel a, posterior, uh, a surface of coaptation, which should be smooth, regular, high, located in the inflow. And how you achieve this is not important. The most important thing is your goal, and you have to have a good goal. One thing which is important in mitral valve, in mitral valve repair is harmony. This is the Sagrada Familia in, uh, in, in uh, Barcelona. And uh, if you look at the Sagrada Familia fr from outside, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, you are really overwhelmed by the beauty and the harmony of this building. It's a little bit like you're a surgeon and you look at the mitral valve. But to understand why the Sagrada Familia will, be, will still be there in 1,000 years, 2,000 years, you need to go inside. Because inside, you have the secret of the architecture of the building, which with its harmony. You see these, those pillars, those columns, there, there is a harmony, and this architecture explains why it will still be there in 2,000 years. This is a mitral valve, and you have the same system. You have the same architecture with pillars, with columns, with cordes. No. Whenever you repair the mitral valve, always do think with harmony, and you have to restore the harmony of the architecture of the mitral valve. So when you do a mitral valve repair, what I, what I learned is that, in fact, you should envision a two-stage operation. The first stage is to remodel the posterior leaflet or the leaflet to uh, uh, do eventually a limited and targeted resection, and then you correct the dysfunction. But those two steps should be, in your mind, separated. So. Uh, it took a lot of years to understand, to understand this. And uh, mitral valve repair has been always very dynamic. We have had a lot of improvements and changes over time that allowed us to repair more and more valves. And at the same time, we did uh, try to do all we could to 